forget, um, before I forget, excuse me, <clears throat> keep an eye on this clock because I'll be explaining with this in a minute. Anyway, what I'm going to show you is a vintage alarm clock. We who This one being a tradition, which I wasn't, I was not familiar with it until I looked at it and noticed that it was imported by Sears Roebuck and Company of Chicago, Illinois. <clears throat> And it's a model 47198. Type 12 hours, 60 hertz, voltage 120 volts, 4 watts, all that neat stuff. And here's the instructions. And I've, either way, it's pretty self explanatory. And I looked at it and I was muddling with it because if you notice, it's all worn out and the previous owner wrote with a Sharpie time set, alarm set low, off, and high. But the price I couldn't beat because it was I don't know if you can see it, but eh, trust me, it says $1.99, so and right here, this is where the snooze bar was. I mean, I have it somewhere, but the main thing is right here, but it's just, I have this brass thing somewhere, so I'll find that and glue it back on. And whatever. I, mean, I did use it, I have been using it, and it's actually pretty decent. The alarm is pretty loud. I mean, two alarm settings, so, well, two alarm set, volume control. I, I can't talk today. Either way, it's loud and it's loud. So, let's see what we can do. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you one alarm. In fact, I'm going to, and this is on high, so. And to cancel the alarm, you can either slide the switch or you can tap that. Not bad. Now the low setting. Low setting. Feel free to talk amongst yourselves. I'll give you a topic. How's the weather where you're at? Answer below. Yeah, that one, not as loud. So, yeah. Okay, let me reset it for in the morning. Because I do have to work tomorrow, so yay me. There we go. Yeah. Like I said, not bad. All right, gang, I figured I may as well explain why I told you to keep an eye on this clock. Because the previous video of where I tried to get this running, and it ended up running, but I wouldn't set it, and I got frustrated and wanted to quit and whatever. Well, that's, I mean, sometimes when things get frustrated, you have to say things that you probably don't mean, and you have to literally just set aside, clear your mind, and fix things when you have a clear head. And it was a good thing I did, too, because, like I said, I mean, it would run, it would advance for a couple minutes, and then stall out, but the second hand would keep running. Apparently what had happened was the gear that controlled the, um, that was on the set stem broke. And here's a little gear that the camera can zoom in. Well, either way, it was literally rubbing up against the other gears and causing us to stall out. I took the motor out and took it and uh, found this and took it out and I mean still I can't set it right and that red dot's going to be annoying but I've had this clock running for a good mm, almost 24 hours and it hasn't died yet so what I may end up doing I may end up taking the uh, motor out of that um, 2008 rewire it a little bit and use that because so far this is actually pretty decent and I was about ready to give up. Maybe. I don't know. But that's just my moral of the story. I mean, it's like, say things you don't mean, just take a break, go back with a clear head, and then hopefully things can go back your own way. Or go right. I don't know. I also don't know where I'm going. I don't do morals of the story. I don't even do the more you know things. So, <sighs> I better stop on the head.
Sometimes time when I sit next to watch Amazon, but I'm still there.